Hello guys, I'm Sir Fancy and I'm going to show you blueprints you should know and also how to use them etc etc. Today I want to show you how to add randomness, use random notes from blueprint etc. Well for that I am I have created this simple blueprint with this simple statue. Notes I will be talking about are a random boolean, a random float and a random integer. And also it's subnotes as random floating range etc etc. You can probably imagine what it will do. With random boolean it will give you random statement either true or false. You have bit information 2 or 1. Oh, 0 or 1. With a random float it's a bit different. It, can, it will give you random information between 0 and 1 which is quite a lot of numbers. So I personally prefer to specify it and use a random float in range which means something let's say between 0 0.1 or 0 0.5 etc. But, but much more frequently I prefer to use random integer where you have to specify which maximum it will use. So now if I put here 6 it will give me random integer between 0 to 6. Make sure that you always count on 0 because 0 is considered a number in programming. And random integer in range is basically same as random float in range. So now let me show you how I would use them. With a random boolean it's simplest because we have only two information so let's try to demonstrate it by changing this glass material. So I will take event graph, put here event plug in play and after that I want to put here a branch and connect our random boolean to it. So on event back in play it will either do true or false, hopefully on random. And if it will be true I want to take our static mesh which is this statue and set it to uh, set its material. I want to use element index 0 because I am changing glass which is element 0 and I want to change it to some of these materials I have prepared and let's say that I want to switch it between green on true and duplicate it on false on let's go set it to blue. And of course you need to connect your target. So now if I, I want to play a game regularly I will just simulate it. You can see that it's green and if I do it again it's again green but we won't need to start it again and again. Let's put here as many of them as we can and see what will happen. Alright, that's six of them. So you can see that some of them were set to true, some of them were set to false and that changed our color. It can be especially useful if you are creating for example traps or you want to spawn some items on different places for different players. So for something like simple procedural generation. For example, let's add here another cube. And let's say that sometimes I want to have it in front of it. And sometimes I want to have it behind it. So what I would do here is to simply leave it like this. On, again on event plug and play I will want to set its relative location. Let's delete this thing. I'll take our cube. Set relative location. By default it's on 130 and 50. But sometimes I want to have it behind it. You can put here, you can put here door, walls, whatever, something that will block player's way. And I want to have it on sometimes on minus 140. So let's simply control C, control V again. And, doo -doo -doo, and switch it to minus 140. So now, alright, that didn't really work out. Let's delete these and just put them next to each other. And now if I click on play you can see that some of them has have it on the right and some of them have it on the left. As I said quite useful for walls or anything like that if you want only between two variations true or false. Another one is random float. I personally don't use random float almost at all but it can be very useful if you want to add a random rotation. For example if you would use move to component or move component 2, you would take that component and let's say that you want to move it to some relative location and you don't want it to move always at the same space so let's say you want to move it to okay let's put here plus always at least 500 units and then about 200 to 300 or about 0 to 300 so there will be always 300 units that it can move in between Let's see where it will move. Or you can just use a random float. 
Random phone won't actually do anything here because it's only between 0 and 1. Let's take here our event back in play. Let's also change our overtime to 5 seconds so we can properly see it and leave here only one again. Move it somewhere far. Move it somewhere very far so it's far from 0, zero coordinates. And you can see it's moving somewhere and, and how much it will move will be always changed for each of these copies. I can actually just duplicate them, place a lot of them here and you can see they have already different speed because they have different distance they need to travel. My most favorite is random integer in range. That's basically like random boolean but with way too many options that you can change it between. Let's again start by changing its materials. So I will take my event peg in plane and I will just use random integer in range. I don't really use random integer to be honest. I just prefer the, that one in range. So first of all, let's take our event back in play. I will, we will want to switch on int. Switch on int is basically a node that you can use very well with random integer in range and it shines its best. And I have here four or five different materials. So I will add here four different pins which means 0 to 3, because remember we are using 0 and I want to always take random integer between 1 and between 0 and 3. And here, let's say that I want to again take my static mesh, set material, element index will be of course 0 and then connect it here. I want to have four of them, to do, do and first one will be blue, second one will be green, next one will be pink, and the last one was, oh, what did I set? Pink, green, blue, red. The last one is red. So now on event again play, it will choose between these four variations and use one of them as this glass material. Let's see it. So now if I click on play, you can see that I have here four different colors, a bit of a Christmas tree if you look at it. But you can use it to switch between whatever you want, between different attacks, between different walls. Again, quite useful if you want to have much higher variety in traps. I've made the dungeon game not so far ago, so I'm always thinking about traps and dungeons. But I believe that you can use it for whatever you want, especially if you have if you have to do anything random for your game. And in game development, you would be surprised how often you need to have a random number. I believe that's everything. I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. Make sure that you do take a note about these notes if you didn't know about them before, because as I said, they are quite useful. And if you know about other blueprints notes that you think every game developer, especially Unreal Engine developer should know, let me down, let me know down in comments. Maybe I will make a video about them and, and that's about it. If this video helped you, please press the like button, subscribe for more and surf and say out.